doing well? I'm boiling. I don't know what is going on with the weather, but I'm absolutely roasting. It feels so muggy and close. All I want to do is get out for a ride. But I wanted to make this video first because I have been asked so many times what equipment I use for filming my videos. So I figured it was finally time that I answered that question. So if you're into filming or maybe you want to make your own vlogs or just document what you're doing to share with your friends or whatever, then continue watching. I'm going to talk you through all the equipment I use from the different kinds of cameras, microphones, um, accessories and how I actually transport my camera plus how I film when I'm actually on a bike. Please excuse the sweat all over my face. I don't even have a hairband otherwise I'd get that hair off my neck. But anyway, let's start on the camera stuff. I just wanted to say that the best camera that you should use for your videos is the one you already own. There are a ton of options out there, but you shouldn't let equipment or lack of stop you from getting out there and just filming what you're doing. Nearly everyone has a phone with a camera these days, and that's how I started shooting my videos. I just took my iPhone and it's got a good enough camera, it's got okay enough sound. So I would start by using that and just play around with it, see um, how it works for you. If you've already tired of using your phone, and let's face it, I did, and nearly every vlogger does tire of using their phone, then there's a whole bunch of cameras out there to choose from, and it can be really hard to make a selection. For me, on my budget, there is no perfect camera. If there's a perfect camera, I want to know about it, because I have tried tons I have tried so many cameras. I'm always ordering them and then returning them or buying them and then selling them. So I do have quite a lot of experience in this. Anyway, let's get onto the cameras that I actually use for my vlogs. There's a few. Firstly, there's the camera I'm filming this on. So I will talk about that one last because I want to show you the ones I've got here and then I will switch the camera around, show you that one and film on one of the other ones. So the first one is this. It is the Sony ZV-1 and this came out really, really recently and because, as I said, I'm really into cameras um, and stuff, I just really, really, really wanted it. So I actually traded in one of my other cameras for this one, another camera that I didn't like so much, so I won't tell you about that one. Anyway, the ZV-1 is designed as a vlogging camera. It's got a flip out and round screen. It comes with this fluff that goes over the microphone. Um, which deals with wind noise when you're out on a ride trying to film. It's just a little touch, but one that's really, really, really useful. I always used to make my own kind of microphone fluff thing for my other camera, so it's cool it comes with this. Um, it's got very um, few buttons on the top, so it's really clear which ones to press when you want to just start recording quickly. Um, when it comes to the settings, you can just use it on the auto movie setting and it works just fine but if you want to go further in depth and start changing things around there's a whole different menu setting so you can do so. The reason why I like this one is it has really good focus tracking of your face so it's really good if you're riding along talking to the camera a lot it works really well as hopefully you can see. I also really like the fact it works with this Bluetooth grip. You can use it as a tripod, which is useful, but the best thing is it makes shooting yourself really, really easy. You can just press the button and it will start recording. So yeah, I really, really like it. This camera retails at about 700 quid. The grip, um, I'm not quite sure how much the grip is. I think it was a couple of hundred quid. So to summarize, I like this camera because the autofocus is very quick, very sharp. It's got a good lens. I like the fact that the lens retracts so it's easier to put in your pocket. It's really small, it's a good size um, and it's very good in just sort of auto mode but equally you can change all the settings. Reasons I don't like this for everything are the image stabilisation for scenery and stuff doesn't seem very good. It just doesn't seem very smooth when you pan around. Like if I'm filming my bike to show you my bike when I move, because I'm not very smooth, it's really jerky. 
but it does seem quite good when you're filming your face. The other slight negative is it's quite slow to turn on and off, which is really annoying. If you're riding along and you suddenly want to film something, you see something cool, it's annoyingly slow to turn on and start shooting and annoyingly slow to turn off sometimes. Like, I've just turned it off, the lens hasn't retracted. Now it retracts. That's too slow when you just want to put your camera down. Anyway, on to the next one. Where's the other one? Okay, nope. What the? Hold on a minute. Got it. So, one of my other favorite cameras is this. It is the Go Ho, Go Ho, Go Pro 8 Black, or the GoPro Black 8. I think it's the 8 Black. Anyway, this thing is amazing. The image stabilization is absolutely phenomenal. None of those jerky shots with this. I can wear it on a chest mount mounted on my handlebars. I can self-film, I can film scenery. The image stabilization is phenomenal. It looks really, really good. The other thing I like about it is it's really, really tiny. It's robust. Um, I want to get a case for this actually because it's not got a replaceable lens like the older models um, But it's great. I filmed entire videos on this because uh, it's so easy to just stick in your bag or your pocket negatives to this one are um, The fact it doesn't have an external microphone port Oh, in fact, I should have said that about the Sony that the first one that I showed you you can attach an external microphone um, but this one doesn't have an external microphone port. You have to put a, um, a, well it's called a medium mod, which is an extra bit you've got to buy. You put that on this and then you can attach an external mic. I'll go more into external mics and why you might want them later. But uh, let's carry on running through the pros and cons of this. Uh, one of the downsides I would say of filming with a GoPro is you have to be careful about what background you stand in front of um, or just what you're filming. You also have to take more care with the lighting on one of these. So for some reason, if I'm standing in front of something green, then it can end up looking really yellow. And um, also it can end up uh, blowing out the highlights. So it looks a bit overexposed with um, yeah, sort of like a yellowy blown out, out highlight look. That doesn't look too pretty. Um, if you know about those things, then you can only film your bits to camera when you're in front of a suitable background, or you can go into ProTune and you can change the settings and the white balance and all that sort of stuff. But I like to just press record. So I just tend to be more selective about where I film things. You can also have a quick look at the LCD screen after you film something, you know, film a few seconds and then check whether it looks good before you film like a whole long monologue. So um, shall we move on to the camera I'm filming with? I am going to switch over to filming with the Sony ZV-1 up here on the tripod with a microphone. Where's the microphone? <laughs> Oh, it's on there! I'm going to switch over so that I can show you the other camera that I like using. Before I do that, would you like to see the microphone? Can you detect a difference in the audio? I normally use this Rode Video Micro um, microphone. Uh, so it stops a lot of the wind noise because it has this giant bit of fluff. And it's also a directional mic, so it means that it will just pick up the sound, well not just, but it will largely pick up the sound of your voice focusing on you and what you're filming rather than all the ambient sound around so it can help cut out background noise and yeah that's what it looks like underneath. Right so I'm now filming with the Sony ZV-1 and the Rode Video Micro microphone so you can exactly see the difference between the camera that I was using before to film which I'm about to show you now. So this is the Canon EOS M50. I have switched out the kit lens that came with this to this 11 to 22 millimeter wide angle lens that means that I can get a lot in. So it really helps if I'm filming myself, 
I can get a wide field of vision and um, it helps if I'm shooting in a small room, which I usually am because our house is quite small. There are lots of reasons why I like this camera for filming and of course some why I don't like it, but um, this is a mirrorless camera. It's got a really good sensor. It comes at a decent price. I can't remember what they retail at nowadays. Um, I got this a while ago through a YouTube program where they awarded us some cash to get new equipment. So thanks YouTube. I just really, really love the footage. It's really sharp, bright, even on all the auto settings, it just gives you a really, really, really nice quality of image. It's pretty tiny for a mirrorless camera. It shoots nice photos as well as good video. I suppose the negative is like the Sony ZV-1 that I'm now recording on, this one, doesn't have good image stabilization. So I tend to shoot with this at home, which is why I was using it just now on my tripod to film this video. Um, I can self film when I'm going out with this. Um, and it's really good for capturing my face because it's got a wide angle lens on. But if I flip it around and try and film my friends or the scenery, then it looks really jerky doesn't have good image stabilization. Okay, so I'm back filming on the Canon EOS M50 with the wide angle lens that I told you about. As I said, this is the one that I like most for filming at home. Um, I figured I'd just quickly talk you through some of the accessories that I've got and how I actually transport my camera when I'm out cycling. Some people like to use a, a strap similar to this, but with a bit that goes underneath your other arm to keep your camera from bouncing around. I've got one like that that I will show you, but I don't mind just using a regular strap and having it really tight because it, your camera does stay in place. It's really not that bad as long as you can shorten the strap enough. This one is by Peak Designs. Let me just show you a bit more closely. It is the, I'm gonna have to look at my phone because I've got the memory of a goldfish. It is the Peak Designs Slide Light, and the reason I like it is the warranty, the quality of the build, and the fact that you can easily switch it between all your cameras. This thing's 40 quid, and if you've got more than one camera, you don't have to buy one of these for every single camera, you just need to buy extra uh, bits that attach it to the camera. The Peak Designs uh, whole thing is they have these small little buttons that you can put through um, the attaching points on your camera and then you can quickly take this strap off and uh, switch it between different cameras. I also have this one by Skin Grows Back. This one is a lot more full on. It is padded. It has loads of bits and pieces. It looks like something from the military or something like that. But this one, it does have the bit that goes underneath your other arm to keep it secure. Oh yeah, here. So you would have your camera attached round like that. So with the uh, Sony ZV-1, I can easily just put that in a jersey pocket and that is why I like it. Or I will put it in my shorts pocket or I will have a, um, a top tube bag, just one just behind the stem and I don't have anything else in there, I just put my camera in there. It's really important obviously that you don't have loads of fluff and grit and dirt and stuff in your pocket or in your bag because you're going to completely screw your camera. I just put my small camera in my pocket and that's why I like my small camera. The GoPro, I again bung it in my pocket or in the top tube bag and I just use my arm to film with. There's no fancy accessories here, I just literally hold it or I will put on a chest mount, you attach your GoPro, well I mean it's bleeding obvious, it's a chest mount, you put it like that and you can film like that and you get a cool shot with your hands and your handlebars in. I also have this roll bar mount which you can attach to, well you can attach it to railings if you wanted to cycle past and film that, or you can get one but a bit smaller that you can attach to your handlebars and that is called a bar mount. So that's about it guys, it's not really that complicated, well she says, with several thousand pounds worth of cameras in her possession. Um, but as I said at the beginning, you know, the best thing to film on is your, the camera that you already have. 
So let's finish off by filming on the iPhone because the battery ran out on my Sony, dear God, can you believe? Anyway, I hope you found the video somewhat interesting. I feel like I probably should have made some notes or talking points before I just started waffling. But let me know if there's anything else you want to know. I'll put a list of the products down there in the description. There'll be affiliate links, so that will support the channel if you buy anything through them. Um, and yeah, happy filming and happy riding. See you later. Bye.